Hi there! Are you ready to calculate some activity ratios? Let's nail them down. For illustrative purposes, we will use the financial statements of a company called SalesSmart Co. It specializes in the retail sector, selling a wide variety of consumer goods, from home and personal care products to health and pharmaceuticals, leisure and entertainment, as well as baby care products. It has many stores all over the world. SalesSmart's major competitors are companies like Procter & Gamble, Unilever, Colgate, Palmolive, and other companies in the consumer goods industry. Okay, these are the firm's statement of financial position and statement of comprehensive income for two consecutive years. Equipped with that information, we are now ready to calculate the company's activity ratios. Let's start with the receivables turnover multiple. You already know the formula, right? Now it's the right time to use it. Let me show you how to do that in Excel. All you need to do is take the total revenue figure from the income statement and divide it by the average amount of outstanding trade receivables. Again, when balance sheet values are incorporated in ratio analysis, most often you need to work with average balances over two consecutive years. It's easy. You take the sum of trade receivables at the end of year three and year two and divide it by two. However, when working in Excel, you'd use the average function and select these two values as variables. Either way, we arrive at average trade receivables of $25,432 million. Total revenue in year three is $198,845 million. So plugging these numbers in the receivables turnover ratio formula, we get 7.82 in the current year. What does this number really mean? Well, it suggests that SalesSmart managed to collect its average trade receivables 7.82 times during the year. So is this efficient enough? We can't tell for sure before we see what the historical trend is and compare the result to a group of peer companies. That's why we calculate the receivables turnover ratio for the previous year. We divide $180,141 million by $25,366 which is the average trade receivables balance at the end of year two and year one. The result is 7.10 times. Based on these outcomes, we can safely say that SalesSmart's efficiency in terms of trade collections has improved. Its receivables turnover ratio increased from 7.10 to 7.82. As we said earlier, the higher the ratio, the better the company's performance. It seems that the firm managed to tighten its credit control. All right, actually, we can always confirm our findings by calculating days of sales outstanding. To obtain it, we divide 365 by the turnover ratio and get 46.68 days and 51.40 days in years three and two, respectively. As this ratio is inverse to the receivables turnover, we judge by the principle. The lower the ratio, the better. Indeed, a company is more efficient if it manages to collect its trade receivables in a shorter time span. It makes sense, doesn't it? Drawing on SalesSmart's success in decreasing its average collection period, we can indeed underpin that it improved efficiency in terms of trade receivables management. Perfect. To get a solid grasp on the firm's operations, you can also calculate the payables turnover and the number of days of payables. Bear in mind that lower turnover ratios and longer days of payables could be a sign of better credit terms agreed with suppliers. You would always want to delay cash outflows, right? However, two prolonged days of payables may also be an indication that an organization struggles to find the cash needed to pay its suppliers. It's the industry norm that helps companies strike the right balance. Okay, in practicality, the payables turnover multiple shows how many times the outstanding payables amount has been settled during a period. Note that the formula uses purchases in the numerator. These are purchases made by SalesSmart itself, as the company buys goods and services from suppliers, some of them on credit. Wait a minute, where do we get the purchases amount from? For simplicity, you can use the following formula. It states that the amount of purchases made during a given year is equal to the cost of goods sold plus the change in inventory. In other words, this is the full amount of inventory purchased. 
irrespective of whether it is sold or remains in stock. So, using this equation, we figure out that purchases in year three are as follows. Inventory at the end of this year, $25,369, minus inventory as of last year, $23,758, plus the absolute value of the cost of goods sold from the income statement. This makes $151,903 million. In a similar fashion, we obtain the amount of the purchase in year two, that is $138,942 million. Now, you can proceed with calculating payables turnover and the number of days of payables indicators in the two consecutive years. If you work correctly, you should obtain that sales smarts days of payables are 44.21 in the current year and 47.15 in the previous year. For a full run on the solution, feel free to check out SalesSmart's Financial Ratios Pack Excel file. All right, you are doing great so far. Our next task is to tackle some activity ratios related to inventory efficiency. That shouldn't be a problem at all. Inventory turnover is calculated as the cost of goods sold from the income statement divided by the average inventory from the balance sheet. In essence, this ratio shows us how many times inventory turned over in one year of operations. As a rule, the higher the inventory turnover rate, the more efficient the company is in managing its stock balance, thus growing sales volumes. They say too much of anything is good for nothing. In this respect, a very high inventory turnover rate due to low inventory levels may result in limited to no stock when customers demand it. This implies that a firm may not maintain a buffer to meet any uncertainty in demand and supply. On the other hand, a low inventory turnover ratio means that goods are stocked up in a firm's warehouse for too long. This, in turn, may cause increased holding costs, obsolete inventory, and significant write-off expenses. So, what's the situation with SalesSmart's inventory activity ratios? Substituting for the known parameters, cost of sales from the income statement, and average inventory from the balance sheet, we see that inventory turnover increased from 5.87 times in year 2 to 6.12 times in year 3. Further down the line, days of inventory on hand decreased from 62.13 days to 59.66 days. Both indicators signalize better inventory management and shorter processing periods. Well done. Now, having made a bunch of calculations, there is one more thing that's worth estimating. Do you still remember what the cash conversion cycle is? This is an estimate of the number of days it takes a firm to convert funds invested into cash inflows from clients. To process it, you need to add the average days of sales outstanding to the average days of inventory on hand and deduct the days needed to pay suppliers. Great, time to practice. Let's calculate SalesSmart's cash conversion cycle. We have everything we need. Days of receivables, 46.68, plus days of inventory, 59.66, minus days of payables, 44.21. We obtain a cash conversion cycle of 62.13 days in year three and 66.37 in the previously reported year. This is another confirmation that the company has improved its operating effectiveness during the last year. The cash conversion cycle has shortened. Excellent. This brings us to the end of the lesson. If you love ratios, you can practice calculating some of them in the blank SalesSmart's Financial Ratios Pack Excel file. We would be happy to take your questions as we go along. Feel free to reach out. Keep up the good work, and thanks for watching.